Now it's time for the ultimate bread pudding, my banana caramel bread pudding. And I top mine with caramel and praline peanuts. So I'm starting off by getting my bread ready. Five cups of egg bread. Like my basic bread pudding, the egg bread is a day old. And I'll spread this on my baking tray. And I give this about 10 minutes at 350, just to crisp up, essentially making egg bread croutons. And while my egg bread cubes are toasting, I can make the caramel sauce. I start with about three tablespoons of water in the bottom of the pot. And I'll add a cup of sugar and just about a tablespoon of either white corn syrup or lemon juice. As the caramel starts to cook, you want to brush down the sides of your pot with water. This keeps the pot clear of any sugar crystals that could end up crystallizing the whole batch. Now, before I started, I measured my final ingredients to add. Two thirds of a cup of whipping cream and two tablespoons of butter. So you get that crackle and hiss, that water's evaporating. The amber color has started. So I'll take this off the heat. Grab my whisk and do be careful when you add the cream to take care for the steam that produces. A long handled whisk is a good idea. Add my butter too. Once you've whisked in your cream and your butter, then you can add your vanilla and just a pinch of salt. A teaspoon of vanilla will do the trick. My custard base is a combination of banana and caramel as a flavor base. But instead of mashing up a banana like banana bread, I want to puree it until it's smooth. I need a cup of pureed banana in total. So depending on the size, could be two, could be three bananas. I'll measure out a cup of the pureed banana. And then I'll top this off with half a cup of the caramel. So that's going to lend a lot of the sweetness to this custard. And of course, that great flavor. There we go. Now I'll pull my bread cubes out of the oven. I'll let the toasted bread cool for a couple minutes while I prepare the custard. For this recipe, making six individual desserts, I use four whole eggs and two yolks. I'll add to this a quarter cup of sugar. I'll whisk this up. And I'll add my caramel with the banana puree. So all I need to add now is just straight milk, a cup and a half. That beautiful caramel colored custard base. For this recipe, I work with the bread cubes while they're still warm, and they soak up the custard so quickly, you don't have to let the custard sit at all. Give this a nice little toss, and I'll add a combination of some fresh fruit, a cup of fresh raspberries. Oh, just think of those juicy raspberries that'll just pop when you take a bite of the warm bread pudding, and, well, why not a bit of chocolate? Goes perfectly with the banana half a cup of chocolate chips. Stir to coat everything. Now I have a roasting pan. 
and within it, six individual ramekins. I've lightly greased the ramekins, and just like that pumpkin gingerbread pudding, you need to bake these in a water bath. So, if you want a spoon or ladle, the bread pudding into each of the ramekins. Make sure you get lots of custard in each of them. Beautiful. I've got my boiling hot water that I'm gonna pour around just halfway up the ramekins, and I'll take this to the oven. I've preheated it to 350, and these take about 50 minutes until they're nice and rich and golden brown on top. These bread puddings smell amazing. Oh, that combination of the banana and the caramel and the raspberry and the chocolate. But I need to take them to the next level with a restaurant style plating, including a garnish and a sauce. But before I get to that, I wanna take the bread puddings out of the water bath. So I just use a jar lifter, the kind if you do preserving. And you do want to cool the bread puddings just a little bit before you serve. You can make them ahead and reheat them if you want. Now, for that finishing touch, that bit of crunch that belongs on a plated dessert, I'm making praline peanuts. Oh, caramelized sugar and peanuts together, hello. So, you're comfortable making caramel, because we made the caramel sauce. A Little bit of water in the bottom of the pot. This time, just half a cup of sugar. Half a tablespoon of corn syrup. I'll get my pot on high heat and brush down the sides of your pot with water. I have my one cup of peanuts ready to stir into the caramel. Now that it's amber, add the nuts and immediately stir them in. You may find as you're stirring them to coat them completely that your sugar might crystallize. If you do find this, all you have to do is reheat it on low heat. That caramel will remelt. Now this does take about an hour to cool because that was just boiling hot sugar. This is what it looks like once it's cooled. And you can, if you want, pulse the peanuts in a food processor to chop them or simply chop them by hand. But you wanna break up the caramel and the peanuts into bite-sized pieces to sprinkle on top. So it still is hot. I want to use a towel. And then I run a pallet knife around the inside to loosen it. And what I like to do is tip it out first. That way I serve it upright, like so. Then the caramel goes right on top. Nice little sprinkle of the peanuts. And there is a beautiful plate from the crunchy peanuts yielding to that soft, warm bread pudding. And of course, the extra caramel. What a spectacular dessert. And starting with such humble beginnings, bread, day old on top of that.